Welcome geometry students to a CUDA worksheet tutorial where you're doing proofs today on corresponding parts of congruent triangles being congruent. Now this is a good uh, guide for proofs in general but uh, corresponding parts for some reason is a big trip up for a lot of students so we're going to go ahead and try to get as many misconceptions out of the way as possible. Let's start with our first one. Given N is a midpoint of AB, okay so there's N, we need to prove that angle X is congruent to angle Y. So these, these two angles, that's our mission. Let's make it uh, a different color. So I'm going to make this, let's go orange. We're trying to prove these two uh, angles are congruent. Now, I like to label things on the diagram first. Let's list our given. So we know N is a midpoint. Okay, that's going to be a giveaway for something soon. AX is congruent to NY. So AX is going to be congruent to NY. Go ahead and mark that. Then we have NX is congruent to BY, and X congruent to BY. Okay, so we have a couple things already, which is great. Um, and now we need to prove that these two uh, angles are congruent. All right, well, it says N is the midpoint of AB. Well, that's a given, okay? Usually I list all the givens at the top, okay? But this one's giving something else. So we have AX... Um, oh, I don't want to jump ahead. Let's go in order. So if we know that this is the midpoint, okay, what does that mean? If it's the midpoint of A, B, then that means it splits it equally, right? Midpoint means it's in the middle. So that means that these two segments, okay, these two segments are also congruent because it's the midpoint. It's in the middle, okay? So those two sides are equal. So now we can say AN is congruent to a N is congruent to N B or B N or however you want to say it. Okay, so we have that. Now, anytime I write in a statement a congruent sign like this, I write that symbol, I need to write myself a letter. I'm not saying like a reflection letter or dear Mr. West. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is a letter. I write S. Why? Because this is a given side. I just determined that we have congruent sides. Boom, right there, side. Okay, so that's important because this will help you determine triangles congruent later on. Now we have AX is congruent to NY. Well, we already knew that one. That was given. And then we had a last given. We had NX is congruent to, oh, I'm sorry, I just broke my rule. Right there, look, a congruent sign. What does that mean? We're going to write what it is. So this is a side. We have segments here. Anytime you see the segment, that's going to be a side. Now we have two sides given. Okay, not given, but now we have two congruent sides that we've labeled. Okay, then we have another side, another side. Okay, they're congruent to each other. Now we have NX is congruent to, what was the last one? BY. Why? Because that was given. I wrote the congruent symbol. Anytime you write the congruent symbol, you should be writing a letter. Okay, so then we have another side because that's a segment. So that's a side, that's a side. Okay, now we have three congruent statements. Not statements, but we have three congruent measurements, either angles or sides. This time it's all sides. So now we can make a statement about the triangles. We can say triangle AXN is congruent to NYB. Why? Because of side 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 a common mistake i see anytime you see two triangles congruent you need three letters okay so this requires three letters that's the only thing you're going to use for congruent triangles you're not going to say corresponding parts you're not going to say definition of congruence you're not going to say definition of triangles okay you're always going to use three letters like this side 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 let me erase that i'm going to use this it's always going to be three letters. So now we, pro we have proven that the, th uh, the two triangles are congruent. These two triangles are congruent. Now, we know that the sides are congruent, but what about the angles? Well, if they're congruent triangles, that means everything about them is the same. So we can go ahead and fill these angles in. Therefore, we know X is congruent to Y because we know that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Once we know that two triangles are congruent, everything about them is congruent. All their angles are going to be congruent. All their sides are going to be congruent. So even though we found the sides first, we also can say that their angles are also going to be congruent. So our last statement is, uh, let's go in pink. The last statement is, 
angle X is congruent to angle Y. That's what we're asked to prove. That's going to be your last step. Not side, 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 okay? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This step is always preceded by this. You always need to prove triangles congruent first before saying corresponding parts of congruent triangles, okay? Moving on to number two. I can always make another video if you need one, okay? I probably will make a part two just so we can go over more examples, but this, will, this is just your intro video. I'm gonna do a part two for you, do not worry. So given RT is congruent to RV, TS congruent to VS, prove RST is congruent to RSV, okay? We're talking about angles. We wanna prove those angles congruent. Let's list what we got first. RT congruent to RV, RT congruent to RV, done. Okay, got that one. TS congruent to VS, TS, VS, done. Prove RST congruent to RSV. All right, now let's find where that is. So we have, we want to prove this guy, RST, RST, okay, that one's this, that angle and this angle. That's the two angles we want to prove. Let me make it a little bit more clear. I'll use orange this time. Okay, so we got something like that. I separated them just so you can see that they're congruent, but uh, make it a little bit more obvious. So let's list our givens, okay? So we, we have a little bit more freedom in this one. Uh, we can write RT is, I was using red before, let me go back to red. So we have RT congruent to RV, and that was given, all right? Now, we should probably list another given. What's another given? Well, TS congruent to VS, that's another given, okay? Now, I forgot something. What'd I forget? Mr. West, you wrote the congruent sign. So guess what that means? We have to write a letter. S, write another letter, S, because those are sides. Anytime we see that we wrote a segment, that little line on top of the letters, that is a side. So now we have a reason given to us that says reflexive. Now, how do they know to go to this thing next? Well, sometimes when you run out of things to do with the givens, the givens in this case were awesome because they already gave us a side. So now we just need one additional measurement, either another angle or a side, to prove these triangles congruent. Because remember, if we want to prove angles congruent, we first have to prove the triangles congruent. So how did it know to go to the next thing, reflexive? Because you, sometimes once you get done with the givens, you go to the diagram to see if there's any information you can get from the diagram. So we have RS is going to be reflexive. Why? Because both triangles touch RS. So we're going to say uh, RS is congruent to RS because of the reflexive property. I wrote the congruent sign, so that means I write side, okay? Now, why is this reflexive? Just as, as a quick reminder, we have two different triangles here. We have this triangle and we have this triangle and they both share side RS. So we need to say that it's congruent to both triangles via the reflex reflexive property. Now we use side, side, side. Why? Because we have side, side, side here and in the diagram, side, side, side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, which triangles are congruent? I'm just going to label them. It doesn't really matter. Triangle RST is congruent to triangle RVS. As long as you go in the correct order with the matching angles, you're good. Okay? And that's what I did. It's congruent. Now, because we said that the triangles are congruent, we can make our big step here. And our big step is we know the two triangles. Oops, let me change this. The two triangles have everything congruent. Even though we just showed the sides, we know all the angles are also congruent. So we're going to say angle RST is congruent to RSV. Why? Because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I like writing it as CPOCTAC personally. You might see CPCTC. I'm not a big fan of that. It's hard to say it. But CPOCTAC is the reason why, because if two triangles are congruent with uh, proving con uh, congruent, even with only three letters, then everything about the triangles, all their angles and their sides are also congruent. This was our good intro video. Stay tuned for part two when I go over more examples. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.